How you doing guys? It's Alessandro here from Spicy Mustache with some new tips in order to help you creating your own green area, indoor or outdoor, following the principles of do as nature does. In my previous video I explained a lot about microorganisms and their function as workers in your garden to provide nutrients for your plants. You should embrace the whole biodiversity of microorganisms without excluding bad or good bacteria. You should enrich your soil embracing the whole biodiversity of microorganisms without excluding good or bad soil bacteria. Doing so you will have more vigorous plants, more resistant to pests and disease, like the plants that you find in the wild. These microorganisms are called indigenous microorganisms and can be found in many different places and collected in many different ways around the area where you grow your own food. So dig up that like button and today I'll show you all you need to know to collect and store your indigenous microorganisms. <music> Mr. Cho Han Kyu invented the Korean natural farming method. Natural farming is an innovative new method of farming that utilizes nature's powers to have a maximum performance rather than using human intervention. Natural farming uses natural materials instead of chemicals as its unique inputs. Materials are locally available and cheap and the farmer's inputs are made by the farmer instead of being purchased from the market. This means lowering the cost for the farmers and converting waste into resources. It does not use herbicide, pesticides, antibiotics, hormones or other chemicals artificially produced and also it doesn't till the land with any sort of machine. Natural farming is used in over 20 countries around the world recognize its strength in producing more at less cost. Being farmer friendly, it's also a tool to improve the living of the poor farmers around the world. Natural farming produces a good yield when the land cultivated has an excellent soil condition for crops. Microorganisms make an important role in making soil good for growing plants. Natural farming promotes the use of indigenous microorganisms, usually called IMO. The microorganisms that have been living in the local area for a really long time are best for farming as they are very powerful and effective. They have survived and can survive extreme local climatic condition of the environment much better than microorganisms produced artificially in a foreign environment. Also, since they are already available in the field, they are the best input for conditioning the land. Microorganisms that you find under the scorching sun or in more shaded areas are completely different. This is why it's best to collect microorganisms from different areas. In natural farming, we nurture the soil and the soil nurtures the plants through IMOs. Microorganisms have two major functions in farming. They decompose complex organic compounds such as bodies of plants, animals and wastes them into nutrients that will be easily absorbed by plants. They can create compounds such as antibiotic substrate, enzymes, lactic acids that will help to repel pests and disease. The best way to collect your microorganism is to look around where you live and find an area with a high vegetation and with similar growing conditions as in your garden. It could be your local forest, woods, some hills, or if you're busy in a city, even a local park could work. The reason is that if you import microorganisms from an area that is not local, so with different weather conditions, temperature, humidity, probably most of your microorganisms will die due to the different growing conditions. The best material that could be used in collecting IMOs is steamed rice. The rice shouldn't be too soft or sticky since aerobic microorganisms do not like to live on it. Also wash your rice before using it for your collection and keep the water that could be used for another input that I will explain in one of the next episodes. What you're looking for to start your collection it's an area with high vegetation that could be under a tall tree or simply wherever you see some mycelium already growing above the soil. Just uncover the first layer of soil by removing all the dry leaves or dead branches. You just need to grab a 
wooden box or cardboard, that would be your collection box. I usually add a layer or two of kitchen towels at the bottom, and then I add a layer of brown rice. The moisture content of your rice will attract indigenous microorganisms living in the local soil. Just make sure that you don't stuff more than two to three inches of rice, as there won't be enough air for the microorganisms. Also, do not compress it, but leave it kind of loose. Without a sufficient supply of air, what you will collect is mostly anaerobic bacteria, but what we're looking for is diversity of aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms. Remember to cover your box with some paper or a loose breathable cover. You could use a box upside down to protect your collection or even chicken wire. A small tip if you live in a city and you need to do your collection in the local park or woods, just make sure that you hide your box properly. Use dead branches or dry leaves to protect your collection as in most case scenario, if someone else finds it, they will think that it's a trap for some animals and they will chuck it away. Mr. Cho said that depending on the weather condition, it will take different amount of times to complete your collection. At around 20 degrees, it will take between five to six days to complete your collection of IMOs. If the temperature is between 30 to 35 degrees, it will take two to three days. However, I'm on my fourth or fifth collection now and I did it mostly during cold UK weather. I would say on average, it takes around 10 days to have a nice collection in a similar weather as in UK. After three to 10 days, you will see a sort of white fluff growing all over your rice. And also don't worry if you see a lot of different colors, as mentioned before, we are looking for diversity of bad and good microorganisms. However, don't leave your collection out for too long or it will start degrading and turn into black mold, which is not really recommended to use. You can now pick up your kitchen towel with your rice and put it in a jar or in a bag to take home and be processed into the next step. This is now called IMO1. Once you collected your rice, inoculated with IMO1, it should look like a single block or multiple small blocks of rice stuck together by this white fluff and a few different colors. This means all your microorganisms are all active and what you need to do is to put them into a state of dormancy for later use. By the way, if you find an insect which looks like this one, it's called isopods. So don't kill them, they are absolutely great for your garden. Jaggery sugar or the Merara sugar are the best ingredients to complete this step. Just keep in mind that you should use a sugar as less processed as possible. In fact, white sugar is not recommended because it's processed. Mix your sugar with your IMO1 at a rate of 1 1. For example, I weighted my rice and it turned out to be 200 grams or 7 ounces, which means I'm gonna weight my sugar and add the same exact amount and mix it in. Don't worry if you add too much sugar, it's not a bad thing for your mixture, but just make sure that you don't add too little because your microorganisms will still be active. Basically, the sugar has some molecules that bounds with the molecules of water, which means that your sugar will pull out all the water inside your microorganisms and they're gonna dry out. This will force them to go into a state of dormancy which is ideal for long shelf life. Once they will go in contact with water, they will rehydrate and wake up and so be active again. If you see some sort of powder coming up in the air while mixing, don't worry because it's just some fungal spores, which are the seeds of good fungus. Once it's all mixed well, you can get a glass jar to store your mixture. Just remember to leave a headspace in your container because air is really important for your microorganisms. As a rule of thumb, always fill up three quarters of your container. I usually gently compress the top layer, but there is no need to pack it too much inside your jar. Another tip that I learned is to add an extra layer of sugar at the top that acts like a cup for your mixture. Always make sure that the top of your container is absolutely clean, because if not, it's gonna attract bugs that eventually can get inside your mixture. As a last step, you will need to secure a breathable cover and keep your jar in a cool and dark place, like a cupboard. I usually close it with a folded kitchen towel and a wristband around it. If the mixture starts to bubble, you could either add some sugar at the top or mix in some more sugar. I also add a label 
with the location and date of my collection so I can track where I collected my microorganisms. This step is called IMO2 and you can use it to water your garden and enrich the soil microorganism in your growing space. Here I have three of my collection that I regularly use to water my garden. To use the mixture in your garden, it's recommended to use it at a ratio of 1, 1000. Simply what I do is to grab a container and dissolve half a tablespoon in one liter of water. Usually I prefer to use rainwater or unchlorinated. There is no need to be extremely precise about the quantities that you use. Just remember that we're not using any sort of chemical, so it won't harm your garden. Steer well and drain your liquid through a mesh into a 5-8 liters bucket with rainwater or unchlorinated. You can now use this mixture to water your garden. Repeat this process once a week every week, even if there are no plants planted out in your garden. In this way, the microorganism will go deep into your soil and start to multiply, improving the quality of your soil. The ideal use for IMO2 will be to transform it into IMO3, but it's a pretty long process, so I will explain everything in another video. I came back to Epping Forest to do another collection of IMOs from another area to add biodiversity to my soil. Korean natural farming, it's not only a way of farming, but it's also a way of living, rediscovering the missing link with nature. If you are transitioning from conventional farming to natural farming, it might take a bit longer to establish a good soil web and improve your harvest. I'm pretty new myself to this method of farming, but I find it really fascinating and the best way to master it is to keep doing it no matter if you fail. It will still be a valuable lesson about nature and how to harvest your food in the most natural way possible. I hope you liked today's video and if so please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification setting so you can be notified every time I post a new video and I'll see you next week for another episode. Thank you so much for watching, see ya!